the assistance that you see here. Uh, and um, Sam Kelly uh, Quattrochi, uh, the CMO analyst. Uh, I encourage you to ask questions uh, throughout uh, and not necessarily wait to the end of the uh, presentation. Uh, and I've checked in with both Neil and Sam and they are comfortable with that. Um, when you're ready, at the end of the evening, there's gonna be two motions uh, at the back of your uh, packet that will need to be made uh, to move uh, this budget forward uh, to the uh, CETA board uh, for adoption on uh, June 13th in a CETA meeting. Um, we set aside an hour for this process this evening. Uh, and um, afterwards, we'll take a quick break and then reconvene as the uh, uh, city's uh, budget uh, committee for the third evening of the city's budget process. Uh, and with that, I'm going to turn it over to uh, Neil and Sam. Well, good evening, CETA budget members, and uh, thank you for your time this evening. I'm Neil Adati. I'm the Assistant City Manager. I'm joined tonight uh, by someone new in our office who I have the pleasure to introduce, and that's Sam Kelly Quattrochi. Uh, Sam is new in our office, but not new to the city. He is our new Legislative and Economic Development Analyst. Uh, so with the work that he does, uh, he is doing work related to handling data and budgets and a lot of the things that we uh, really need to do a good job here uh, for CETA and for the city manager's office. Also in our office and not on the screen tonight is Bahana Keen, whose role has expanded uh, related to a lot of the urban renewal work. And we'll touch on a little bit of that later. Additionally, we're in the process of hiring a new economic development manager who will be your CETA manager and would do this presentation typically and will lead discussions with the CETA board. But in the meantime, uh, Sam KQ and I We'll do our best to walk through this budget, answer any questions you have, and Chair Schmunk, um, any questions that you have during the presentation, or if you see a hand, just stop us and we'll answer whatever questions come up. Um, and Sam, I think you're gonna drive the PowerPoint presentation. So if we could get you to pull that up, great. Thank you. Okay, so, the first slide that's up here, just the welcome slide, but it's also your budget presentation binder cover. And we just think it's just an awesome photo of the three hotels that are in Glenwood, uh, owned by the Patels and completed in partnership with the CETA board. We'll touch on those in a moment, but uh, just a great, great way to start um, with those incredible properties down at the edge of Glenwood. So Sam, if you can give us the next slide. Just before we do, Neil, sorry, are you all seeing just the slide, not our note slide with our, my chicken scratch on the side? I, I have two screens, so make sure I'm showing the right stuff. This is just the yeah. slides. Yeah, we see the note screen as well. Oh, you do? Yeah. Let me... Or, or so actually, we see the, the next slide screen. Hmm. My apologies. That was supposed to be just... Yeah, two years into telework. There we go. That looks good, yep. Sam. I hit play. Now just the slide? Yes. Now, there we go. Thank you so much. All right. All right. So you've seen this slide before. Um, the city has two voter approved urban renewal districts. It's unusual. It's also unusual um, that Springfield is one of the cities in Oregon where voters approve these taxing districts. And so we're thankful to the voters for their trust in us as we continue down the process. Uh, as you know, when urban renewal, an urban renewal area begins, the assessor freezes the base value, which continues to go to the taxing agencies, but any growth goes back into the district. And this growth is specifically for redevelopment work that continues to increase private taxable development. And so let's go to the next slide, Sam. So these are our two urban renewal districts. They should be familiar to you. I think they're teenagers now. They've been around for a while and they're um, you know, doing what they're supposed to do. Glenwood on the left, often referred to as the pork shop. We haven't come up with a good name yet for the Springfield Urban Renewal District, although Sam recently hurt himself and it did look like the brace that he used. Um, so maybe that's the way we do it. Um, so we move to the next slide. Sam's gonna take the next couple. 
Well, we all appreciate the uh, perfect view, academic view. This is more realistically what we're seeing here with this growth of the of our two zones. Uh, on the left, Glenwood, nice and steady looking forward. Uh, downtown on the right. That small dip in 2015, 16, I wanted to point out, that was a, a fire in a building. So that building was taken off our tax lots. We lost that income. And then we're seeing bounce back up. The other two things that are no longer on these graphs in the past, we no longer see the recession. 2008, 2009, was a pretty big hit. Uh, we did clearly bounce back from those. You're no longer seeing those in these presentations. And then on the downtown side, we had a tenant leave uh, Booth Kelly, pretty large, unique tenant, um, and they had a pretty big uh, bit of income there. We have been replacing them with smaller groups, but we're seeing a little bit leveling out um, as opposed to that steady growth. And that's what we're seeing in that out year there. Digging more into Glenwood for a bit. At the time when it was frozen, about $106 million, that was the base. Uh, last year, our incremental growth was about $1.1 million. Again, within these zones, that money has to go back into development uh, to in increase the growth, increase the tax increment. So the estimated tax value going into 23, $201 million, looking pretty strong there, and estimated income about $1.2 million. Uh, again, we're investing that back in the community, and we should see this growth steadily increasing over time. So when we get into the characteristics of Glenwood, you could see that the uh, voter approved um, urban renewal district in 2004, and that base was frozen in 2005. Uh, strong focus on commercial, residential, and industrial with um, core infrastructure and open space also important to important goals. You have a series of programs that you see at the bottom that can help with development, retention, and recruitment. And you can see that our in maximum indebtedness is 32 million or about 11 million that we have spent a good amount of that on property purchases at this time. So this is a pretty cool um, slide. It really brings into focus a lot of the work that's happening in um, Glenwood, and we'll spend a couple minutes on it. And again, questions, just send them our way. So if you look to the West, you'll see an investment and hotel uh, highlighted area. Those three hotels were uh, CETA purchased the properties and negotiated the initial transactions with our partnership, um, the Patel family. The True Hotel by Hilton, the Patels opened that property during COVID. You might remember that some of the fire evacuees actually stayed at that location. Uh, we were able to use, in addition um, to the uh, to the CETA funds, some SDC fees, which are also in the CETA toolbox, and that allows the board to pay the SDC fees to the city, uh, which we did for that hotel, those hotels. We also use the tool uh, regularly to help with recruitment, retention, and expansion. Uh, Franz Bakery is a good example of where the board was able to use um, payment of SDC fees. If we move to the uh, northeast, you'll see the land assembly highlighted area. That's where the CETA, the CETA and City of Springfield has, have assembled more than nine acres of riverfront property in Glenwood, and that's for future redevelopment. Uh, after last year's budget, committee meetings, a formal request for qualifications was issued in late August of 21. Uh, Edlin and company and DeChase Mixus provided a response. That response was evaluated and we used a review process that was approved by the board. And the board chose to move forward with that development team. And so Edlin Mixus is a team that's now in a joint venture with um, Edlin Development and DeChase Mixus. Elin and Company is from Portland. The Chase Mixes is a locally owned development company. They've combined for 40 completed projects and have 12 projects under construction that all are relevant to the work that is outlined in the um, refinement plan. The developer has already started reaching out to adjacent property owners. A lot of work has already been done um, on the site as far as networking and meeting and getting those connections together. Uh, they also meet regularly with the city team. The city team includes the city manager's office. Nancy Newton is in these meetings as well, planning, finance, engineering, legal, um, and a consultant we have brought on board. Uh, those meetings happen regularly. The next step in these meetings is to really develop that MOU 
That'll describe the intentions and roles of the city and the development team, uh, leading eventually to an RFP. And the RFP will lay out how the development moves forward, who pays for what, et cetera. So tremendous amount of work yet to be done, but from our initial uh, work that we've done with the development team, we feel we really have a, the right folks in place to bring the vision of Glenwood to life. Um, so that's a super exciting project that we spend a lot of time on and has been a long time in the making. To the south, you'll see the uh, Wildish property. This is something that came up last year. I believe board member Jesse had some great questions about the Wildish property. At the time, the Weyerhaeuser headquarters, which you will see in the bottom photo on your right, uh, even though it's a little bit small, you can kind of see that is the Weyerhaeuser regional headquarters, officially opened last year. Um, at this time, when we were doing the budget meetings, it was under construction, but now it is open and folks are working there. Across the street, the site across the street is undergoing pre-development work that's owned by the Wildish as well. Developer is continuing their site plan review and the Willamette Greenway permit work, working with city staff. The feedback we've gotten from staff is that they are an incredible partner to work with. They really have their plans well laid out. Um, after the site plan is submitted, this would be going to the planning commission and then back to the council. And that's a 44 acre site along the river. There are not many of those left. And um, we're pretty um, happy with the hard work that Wildish is doing. <clears throat> Excuse me, that area is zoned Glenwood commercial mixed use. Um, so an update on a few of the larger projects in Glenwood, there is a lot happening. So the priorities for moving forward, um, implementing the Riverfront Development Plan is the number one priority, but there are a couple of other items that are still important to us. One is the entryway sign. Before the pandemic, uh, Councillor Mo, who is the ward counselor for that area, asked us to improve the signage so folks knew that they were in Springfield. The council thought that was a good idea. We installed four kind of the green highway signs, but we also did in partnership with Urban Lumber, a specialty sign that actually several members of the council assisted with the actual design. Um, the sign that you see here is in Ward 6, the Councilor Pichonary's ward, and a exact replica of the sign will go into Glenwood, welcoming people into um, Springfield, the Glenwood area of Springfield. We'll have those signs up before the Oregon 22 World Championships this July. So folks that are visiting will see that. Additionally, the Glenwood zip code, uh, if you've heard us talk about the zip code, it is a, another long-term issue. When the urban renewal plan was first implemented in 2004, that's when we also started on working to change the zip code in Glenwood. So currently, any business that is in the Glenwood area, including Franz Bakery, um, the Weyerhaeuser uh, Regional Headquarters, the hotels, and the new development that will come on the riverfront will carry a Eugene zip code. It's a holdover and we've tried um, and we will continue to work to have that change. We've been working with our federal delegation. They're in full support. Um, we have not been successful working through the myriad of postal service challenges that lead to changing the zip code. We have another chance, you have to do it every 10 years. So we are putting together a full court press for our next chance and we are not gonna rush it. We're gonna take our time, get all of our information, but this is something that's very important. Again, 10 years from now, when new developments come in, we wanna make sure it's a Springfield, Oregon as their uh, signature line on all of their mail that comes in. Any questions? I know we're putting out the information pretty quickly, but we wanna make sure we get through everything. I'll pass this on to Sam then. Just the last bit of Glenwood, we do have the line by line detail for you. It'd be remiss as an old budget person to not show you this. I think some of the important considerations looking at our revenue, the biggest change is the beginning cash balance. We carried just shy of a million last year. Uh, this year, we're just under a quarter million. Uh, and then in the uh, expenses, a property purchase. 
Uh, in 22, down in that capital side, we see about a million dollars in property. This year, no planned property purchases. Again, we've done a pretty good full court press, buying up per property, securing some areas these past few years. Um, and for now, it's sort of a, taking a breath, let the increment come in, uh, and then reassess where those next steps are. Going back to our lovely maps here of the of the ham bone, the T-bone, and the, uh, the leg brace, uh, we're now going to go back to downtown and talk about that area as well. Again, this graph should look familiar to you now. I, I know I see it in my dreams now. We froze downtown about $124 million when it first began, seeing uh, about 857000 in, in revenue the year before. This year, we're looking at closer to 80, 880000 uh, and that new base at 192000 190 million, pardon me. Uh, again, this graph really gives you that nice close-up detail of how this ebbs and flows on the downtown core, especially as buildings come in and out the tax lots. Um, it's very um, flexible in those ways. Uh, looking at a little more details in downtown, it's about 618 acres uh, with a much higher, or not much, but a higher indebtedness to spend, 43 million, and only about 5.4 million spent so far. Uh, the downtown really focusing on this revitaliz revitalization, um, building up our stocks of buildings, streetscapes, and public improvements. Very similar programs in the two areas, these SDC programs, land assembly, infrastructure, and land use planning. Some of the bigger, more unique focuses in downtown um, are going to be the business expansion, the art and investments, uh, and this Discover Downtown from the parking program. These are some of the unique pr programs we're working on right now in the downtown area um, over the years. So looking at this map, we have a couple of projects just to go over uh, quickly that are exciting and um, just want to bring you up to speed. So. CETA purchased at the west, you'll see this property that CETA purchased outlined in red from sub uh, in 2020. And that was as part of a third party proposed redevelopment concept to be located right on that corner um, on Main Street. And uh, the concept does not include lot 4900. I think you could see that that is the lot on the left of the outlined area. The tenant on that property approach, the tenant on the property on the left approach, CETA staff um, and the CETA board has provided authority to negotiate a purchase and sale on that property. So that property will um, much soon will no longer be in CETA hands. It will be in a private developer's um, ownership and a business will continue there. Uh, the remaining part of the site is still part of that third party concept. And that concept changed from the 2020 ask and so the developer is planning to re-engage with CETA on their proposed changes, and that'll be coming to the CETA board um, over the next, in the next fiscal year. Uh, the Carter building, which I think is outlined here, it's small on my screen, but that is the building across from City Hall. And that was the site of the proposed library development which is not moving forward in that particular, at that particular site. Um, so it is a building under city ownership. The building was damaged beyond repair over the last winter and the building will be demoed. So while this is a city property, we'll also be using some CETA funds um, as an urban renewal project to demo the building and then work with the adjacent property owners to make sure we have as little disruption as possible. Eventually that building could be RFP'd or RFQ'd. Uh, if you look at the redevelopment photo, many of you know that that's our uh, number one priority downtown, and that is Blue McKenzie. So Blue McKenzie is, the project is moving forward, and we are in the final stages of design with the developer. As everyone is aware, inflation is making things a bit more challenging, but we're really focused on what the market is doing and having the project ready to go when the market is ready. So Blue McKenzie is a combination of the Shearer family, the longtime owners of the Shearer Buick uh, building remains, uh, and um, the other part of the partnership is the Portland-based developer, Northwest Sustainable Properties. So we've been working with them sometimes twice weekly, sometimes three times in a week to make sure that this project is moving forward. So we've committed to a design path, and that includes an eight-story building, primarily mass timber. Uh, CETA approved a loan to Blue McKenzie LLC to up to 2 million and the 
developer used about 400,000 of that, if I'm remembering correctly, for property acquisition and is 1.6 million is being used for design. This project will, pro will have about 5,000 square feet of commercial space on the ground floor, seven stories of market rate residential space, potentially up to 85 units. Um, so we're really excited about that project and happy that it's moving forward, even in kind of these crazy times of inflation. Across the street from the um, Blue Mackenzie site is the Memorial Building. The Memorial Building was purchased by CETA in 2020 and is now owned by CETA. As you might know, it was temporarily used as a warming shelter this winter, but council has provided funds, uh, ARPA funds, on a, an alternative site for next year. And so CETA may choose to RFQ or RFP this building, but there aren't any future plans for a, a warming site at this building. But an exciting, again, an exciting place right across the street from the redevelopment site of Blue McKenzie. So a couple of updates, uh, priorities, obviously, the Blue McKenzie work, um, fiber connectivity and downtown are working closely with sub on this priority. Uh, downtown parking remains um, a priority for the city. Just before the pandemic, numbers were getting very close to the program being self-sufficient. Obviously, the pandemic has hurt that, but we're still in partnership with uh, Reef Parking. They are located now at 138 Main. They used to be at the Carter Building. And uh, we're still working on um, you know, doing a quality program downtown for parking. And then downtown connections. You know, Vahana Keen in our office has seen her um, workload expand as we have, you know, more and more things are coming on our, our plate. So she is starting the downtown meetups in person again, that will bring us back into connection with our uh, folks downtown without a virtual environment. And we're also doing some work around Booth Kelly, so not technically CETA, but within the urban renewal district, we've revamped um, the city's property management and Vahana has led that work. And so when we look at Booth Kelly and we talk about um, you know, losing the Greenbrier space, which was a hit to the budget of about $190,000, um, what we've been able to do is refill that Sawtooth building with other tenants. So not as large as Greenbrier, but bringing in about $80,000 a year between the two tenants. It's a really challenging building to fill if you've been out there. We've also revamped and updated all of the contracts and rental lease agreements to bring them back closer to market. So when we connect all of that together, we're really looking at numbers that are very close to what Booth Kelly was bringing in when Greenbrier was there. And that's a lot of the work that Fahana has done in her expanded role. And we're really thankful for that. So with that, I think we kept pretty close to the time. We might have one more we have one more slide or are we ready for questions? Just the quick, again, we have yes. these line-by-line right. line details of the financials. We can bring them up on a bigger screen if we need to. Biggest changes is Blue McKenzie. Uh, in terms of the revenue, there was an interfund loan. So you're seeing that 1.5 million drop off this year. And But again, spending, you're not seeing the 1.3 spend from last year to this year. Uh, anything unspent will carry over and we'll work on that with, with uh, CW Council on the next supplemental budget um, to carry forward any unspent funds. But otherwise, yeah, for Chair Schmunk, that is our presentation. If um, you have any questions, all right. So uh, yeah, go go to questions before we go to public comment. Um, anyone raise their hand? Uh, whoever's helping me with the screens, uh, Board Chair. It looks like you have Councillor Mo and then Board Member Raish. Uh, Councillor Mo, go ahead, please. Thank you. Uh, as you know, I'm an advocate. Downtown urban renewal is great. Listening to Neil talk about that, all the little things that we've been doing over the years and what's been accomplished is fantastic. It's exactly what I wanted to see for downtown. Glenwood, not so much. You've heard me talking in the past that, that uh, we, we did urban renewal 19 years ago. And we, in that, we were able to provide jobs, homes, low income homes and businesses that will attract other development and rebuild our community to make people proud of. We've done nothing, none of that. And 
I'm trying to figure out how in this, how as we go along with this budget, we can start paying some attention to those little little things, add them up. Let's make Glenwood better and more attractive. The uh, RFP for the land that we've purchased, I, I don't have a lot of faith in that because I've heard it too many times in the past. So that's just land that's set aside. I don't know what's gonna happen to it, but the rest of the community, I wanna see us put some work into. It's, it's very, 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 very important. Thank you. Thank you. Okay, uh, and who's the next one, Neil? As a board member, Raish. I think I am. Uh, go ahead, um, Darlene. I just I had a question on this Blue Mackenzie. I thought last year when we had this meeting, it was a six-story building, and now <laughs> you say it's eight-story. Is that a change, or am I just wrong? Uh, board member, I'm not going to say that you're wrong. I did remember that you had this question last year. Um, I can we can make sure that we didn't say six, but the the plan from the beginning was eight stories, uh, story of commercial, and then seven of residential. It, it is that right next to the post office there? That's correct. Yes. And so you're going to have this monolith downtown. Um, I mean, that's just my personal opinion. Okay, th thank you, Darlene. Uh, uh, any other questions? You want to have their ha hand raised? Chair, um, I don't see any other hands at this time. Thank you. Uh, okay. Um, so uh, now time for public comment. Do we have anyone? Uh, and I don't know if I need to review the uh, public comment rules. Basically, the uh, um, public comment options are using the Zoom webinar, webinar, writing an email, or written comment. So uh, thank you, Neil. Do we have any of that? Uh, thank you, Chair. Uh, we don't have any uh, written comment. We have uh, nobody here in person. Um, but I do, uh, it does appear that we have one hand uh, raised in the webinar. So uh, whenever you're ready, I can, um, it looks like it's uh, Schley Lynch. Um, um, whenever you're ready, Chair, I can unmute them and uh, pull up a okay. three minute uh, time clock. Great, okay, Shay, go ahead. You have three minutes. Let them start the clock. Thank you, go ahead. Okay, Shalee, you should be unmuted. It's pronounced Sly Lynch, and I would be in there person, but it kind of looked like a closed door. Uh, can you hear me? Yes, we can. I can hear you. Go ahead. Uh, so I'm curious how everything we're doing in Glenwood helps low-income housing. Uh, unless these buildings that are going to go in in the Glenwood area are designated for people of low-income housing, and my opinion of low-income housing is a single income of minimum wage, could afford this building and still survive, then it's not low income housing. Uh, I'm curious what it takes to get the area between Franklin Boulevard and the railroads. So south of Franklin Boulevard, north of the railroad tracks, east of Glenwood Boulevard and west of Glen, uh, Franklin Boulevard. I'm curious what it takes to get some uh, services that our tax dollars pay for uh, currently. We don't get any services in the area unless there's somebody pretty much dying. And uh, even with code enforcement, we can call and make complaints to code enforcement and try and get some of these people out of the area, but it's near impossible. Um, from my understanding, the difference is us having public utilities and having services that makes us part of the Springfield. If that's the difference on us getting police services that at least get it to where my kids can safely walk the dog around the neighborhood without feeling threatened, um, we need to look forward to that direction. Uh, I'm also curious how this building downtown Springfield is going to help uh, reduce the housing costs for people of low income. Uh, is there a designated price that they have to rent these units out for or a maximum dollar figure? Or is it just like we're handing money over for a developer to put in a huge building that's going to make them a lot of money when it comes to the rental? My family used to have 16 rentals. So I know that's a huge amount of income every month. Um, I'm curious how this helps with our low income housing. Uh, um, that's my biggest concern is getting some services in Glenwood that helps protect my neighbors and their kids more than anything. 
Um, and that's all I have to say. Thank you, Shalai. Um, all right, um, now it's time for deliberations. Um, so if you have a, I guess a, a question, uh, please raise your hand. Anybody you wanna comment on a, okay. Uh, okay, apparently none. Um, we, uh, we will move on to the uh, approval of the budget. Um, so Nathan, help me, you had indicated there need, go ahead. Uh, yes, uh, what we typically do, and, and maybe folks feel this has already happened, but we'll bring up a, a blank worksheet, um, a, a RATA worksheet, and then entertain any potential motions for adjustments to the budget. Um, Thank you. That's part of the deliberation process. All right. So with that, uh, Neil Obringer, could you bring up uh, a worksheet? Absolutely. Here, give me one second to pull up. Uh, I'm sorry, I, I didn't have the CETA errata handy, so I'll just take one second. And then uh, some years, this will be pre uh, populated with adjustments. Uh, that's going to be the case uh, later this evening in the city's budget process. Uh, for CETA, uh, nothing came to our attention since we put this together. So it's just a matter of entertaining any motions uh, from all of you. And I'll mention that any um, uh, committee member can make a motion for an adjustment. Uh, it will need a second uh, to go to a vote. And before that vote, there'll be an opportunity for uh, discussions. Uh, so with that, I'll turn it back over to you, uh, Steve. Thank you. Okay, um, so if, if anyone have any um, adjustments to make? I do. Steve Mo. Go ahead, Steve. Yes, go ahead, Councilor Mo. I make a motion that we set aside 200,000, and I'm talking about Glenwood here, set aside $200,000 for the benefit of the Glenwood residents and businesses in the next year, and, and not for all this other stuff we've been doing. It's, set, it's, it's pretty, there's not a lot of detail that, to that, but, but I think everybody knows what I mean. That's it. Thank you, do we have a second? I'll second it. Okay, we have a, a motion and a second. Um, so um, do, we, do we put these on there or we vote them one at a time, uh, Nathan? Uh, Mayor, um, did you wanna speak? Um, are, are we close to additional motions? So if you could. Well, yeah, that's what I'm asking. Do we vote on just them each or do we aggregate them? Typically we're going to do one at a time because it won't go on to the Serata until it's actually been voted on and approved. It's going to need, uh, let's see, 14 committee members. Uh, so we're going to need eight positive votes uh, for this body. Um, and so what I think I'd ask for at this point is if there's any uh, discussion on this before it goes to a vote. Comments, so, go ahead. Go ahead, Darlene. Yeah, just restate the, the motion, please. Pretty pretty much I'm asking that we set aside $200,000 for, I would call it immediate benefit for the, for the community, for the housing, the businesses in Glenwood that uh, should have been done years ago. And I, I don't have specific needs. We can establish that, but boy, I tell you, we need everything down there. So that's it. And so I should probably add, though, that we are restricted in how we spend money within our urban renewal district uh, to oh, the plan. So it would have to fit within the language of the uh, oh, plan. Council. I know that. It's homes and low-income homes, businesses. Uh, I've, I've read the uh, urban renewal document pretty thoroughly. There's, it's, got a, it's got a lot of flexibility in it, and uh, I'm sure we can make it work. Oh, so can I ask where where were that where does this these funds come from? What's do we have to designate where they're transferred from? Uh, that would have to be identified, and that's something staff would go back and uh, do. Um, if if this uh, is voted on and approved, uh, then we will do that, and then um, come back with that adjustment uh, at a, at, at the time of the adoption. 
So I think at this point, Chair, um, you've got a number of hands up that I think want to participate in a discussion. I see George Jesse, uh, Mayor Van Gordon, uh, Paul Selby, and Councillor Woodrow. And now Councillor Pichonary. Okay, uh, Neil, if you could just, uh, I'll let, let you take uh, one at a time as, as, you're, as they uh, put up their hands, I guess, or whatever order you want to do. Go ahead, please. Could you put our hand up? Please? I will. Thank you. So uh, my screen, if it's helpful, um, board member Jesse is the first and followed by board, uh, Mayor Van Gordon. I guess I'm unclear on what $200,000 would be used for in, uh, it's, it sounds like a kind of an open account and I'm not sure if, if that's appropriate for this type of um, budget process, but just a little more detail on what that would be. I agree. Did you want me to answer that? Well, uh, yeah, I would hope someone would have, would answer it. It's, you know, just to make comments and, and not hear anything isn't very okay. helpful. Well, I'm sorry. I, uh, like I said, I lost, lost my agenda. Uh, there's a lot of businesses trying to locate in Glenwood. They're having incredible problems with, with, with the city. They need connection to sewers, short sewer lines, and then, uh, uh, that's a, that's going to be a big thing, and then uh, it just it's just various businesses. I've talked to a lot of them. They go down to the city and they walk away. So I can't say anything specific, but uh, and that's one example is is extension of a lot of sewer lines. Okay, so it would be more cars. like a capital improvement type request. Well, community improvement. Okay. I, I guess that's a, something the council will get to decide anyway. Okay. Uh, uh, well, okay, the next person, please. Looks like, yes, Mayor Van Gordon followed by um, Board Member Selby. Um, I guess here's, here's kind of where I'm at. I'm not gonna vote for this. Um, and I was like, Steve, I think you got real questions and sort of real concerns about examples of people that need help with, with things in Glenwood. I would take, I would take those specifics directly and have a, and have a meeting with the city manager about it and try to get them addressed. Um, sort of just allocating funds isn't going to help the, like this isn't going to help necessarily help the issue. Um, but I think if you can meet with Nancy and go through where your actual concerns are, that would be helpful um, to get to get the get the get the issue addressed. Uh, board member Selby, I believe next. Yes, thank you. Um, I mean, I'm going to just echo kind of what I've heard here. I, I fully support the development of Glenwood and. I think it can use some help. I mean, as can downtown Springfield, and I think it's all in measured steps, but that's the thing is I, I wouldn't want to appropriate funds without purpose. I'd really like to know where things are going versus just saying, let's put some money there. Um, I think we're trying to put money into all the places that make sense and prioritizing where that money goes. So again, I'm not saying that it's not important, but I would just like to know how that money would be spent before I would vote in favor of it. Okay, thank you. Um, other comments, Neil, and other folks raise their hand. Chair Schmunk, we have uh, Chair Woodrow followed by Councilor Pichonary. Okay, um, yes, I'm sitting here feeling the same way. I think that um, I, I, I follow what the mayor said. I, I Once a conversation is had with Nancy, it can certainly come to CETA um, where we can talk about what what would be available and how we could help out. and and maybe establish some type of system or prioritize where the most um, need is or benefit or if, say we've got a dozen people that have different things, then CETA can look at them and say, yeah, we'd like to help here, here, here. Um, but I, I'm cautious about writing a blank check. I, 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 it's still possible for people to come to CETA and, and ask for things to have happen that way. And I think that going through Nancy and coming back to CETA would be, for me, would be the comfortable route to go. 
I'm going to interject myself really quick just to, there's a, a member of the public raising their hand and the public comment period has closed. Um, my apologies, but there's no opportunity again during the CETA meeting for the uh, public to comment. And then with that, let's continue the conversation. Thank you, Nathan. Go ahead, Joe. Thank you, Steve. Um, I just want to reiterate what everybody's thinking it. And um, Councillor Mo, I totally understand where you're coming from. I know what you're saying and I know where your heart's at, but in this particular uh, forum and this particular venue, I don't think it would, it would, uh, it's not going to go anywhere, at least that I, but it just, it, there's no place to put it. But I do have, uh, you do have my attention when it comes to, in regards to this may, this is definitely something that the council would be uh, involved in and make decisions in. It could be other accounts, you know, ARC money, whatever. But um, with, without any specificity and actually without even an actual fund in which to transfer money to it, I don't I don't see this happening, but uh, I, I, I can't vote for it. But do know that I, I am listening. And I hear what you're saying, but I think that it's a, it would be a different forum uh, for that type of request. Chair Schmunk, you have Councillor uh, Stair and then Board Member Schaefer. OK, go ahead. Thank, thank you, Stephen. Um, so uh, this is me just um, asking questions out of only partial information. Is there any money that is earmarked for capital improvements in a specific neighborhood of Springfield right now? I don't know if we have the, anyone yeah. here to answer that. Oh, they didn't. Oh, shit. It was out on the map. Uh, I'll remind uh, folks, uh, please keep your uh, uh, mics uh, uh, muted when possible. Um, so Tom so have, has raised his hand. Let's bring him up uh, to be a presenter. And I think he's got an answer uh, to that question, Councilor Stair. Okay. I, I was just going to suggest that if there are uh, if there are funds currently earmarked for specific neighborhoods in Springfield, then I, I would suggest that this might actually be a proper motion. And I, uh, I, I would certainly entertain uh, possibly um, dedicating funds to the Glenwood neighborhood because uh, God knows that they need it as badly as anybody. That's all I got, thanks. Okay, thank you. Uh, sorry, who was next? Uh, uh, Tom, Tom Boyat came up to answer the original question of Councilor Stairs. And I also see the city manager's hand up um, you know, when, when, uh, the council programs, the capital improvement program, when they adopt that the projects are selected as projects across the city and, uh, we do not program funds by neighborhood. Thank you. Board chair Schmunk, you have a board member Shaper followed by city manager, Nancy Newton. And then I believe Councillor Moe's hand was also up. Okay, uh, Councilor Schaefer, or uh, sorry, uh, who who is next? I had board member Schaefer followed by Nancy Newton. Okay, Councilor Schaefer, go ahead. I just had a quick question. Um, I'm wondering if this uh, money was earmarked. Can it go to things like sidewalks or streetlights, that type of infrastructure for Glenwood? Would would money be able to? Would this money be able to do that? Okay, um, Councillor Mo, would you like to answer that? I, I believe it does, but what I, I guess what I want to go on here, it sounds like my, my motion will not succeed, but it has succeeded in my mind because I've, called, I've brought attention to Glenwood for everything we need there. I can't do anything specific because we need everything. And, and everybody knows that. And I appreciate you hearing that, and and uh, I uh, I hope in the future that we can support Glenwood better than we are. Thank you, Holly. Um, city Manager, uh, would you like to comment a little? Someone had to do it. Okay, just for a point of clarification uh, regarding Glenwood, um, I've had a meeting with Councillor Mo as well as a couple of um, 
private developers that have an interest in doing uh, some projects in Glenwood. And we discussed what some potential uh, projects could be that haven't been previously on the radar for CETA. Uh, we talked about uh, ways that uh, the city can make it easier for them to work in the local community to get projects moving. Um, we had a very productive uh, conversation uh, with these individuals. Um, I um, asked, you know, we're, we're still working with them. We're having some discussions about uh, providing some examples of what they would uh, like to accomplish within uh, Glenwood or potentially other areas in the city. Um, and I, I feel like they, they were very encouraged by that conversation. Uh, they were going to provide me with um, some ideas of what they would like to pursue. Um, so that isn't quite uh, ripe yet. They, they haven't put that forward, but that would be something that I would, uh, once we get a little bit more firm information from the people that, are, that have expressed this interest that, that we've met with, I would then um, talk to the CETA chair and, and get some time on, on the CETA board's agenda for this purpose. So I would, I would say that we are doing uh, work in Glenwood. It's just, you know, it, it takes some time to um, get a de developer with a defined project and then go through the process of uh, working that through the CETA board. Thank you. Okay, thank you. Um, so we have a motion. Um, uh, and so sure. to deal with that, if there are other folks that want to- I'd be glad uh, to withdraw my motion. Just, just to make it simpler. Okay. Okay. You said you made your point. I guess uh, a, a yeah. good. Okay. Thank All you. right. Uh, there's there's, one, there's one other hand raised. We did have one. It was hand. me. Yeah. Yes, thank oh. you. Sorry. I just needed to. Yeah. I'll second um, Mo's um, motion. But I think this was a healthy conversation because in last three years that I've been on the committee, I know we're always approving the budget and never talk about what's going to happen in Glenwood. You know public safety, lighting, uh, those are the things still needs to happen in a Glenwood. You know, we're, I know it does take a time to do it, but we still need to talk about it and we still need to bring it up and make sure that Glenwood still needs a lot of help uh, in the development, in the businesses and the low income family as well. Okay, thank you. Um, all right, so uh, then we, I guess, are still entertaining uh, motions. Anyone make a, another motion? I would move to approve the budget as proposed by the city manager in the amount of $2,789,547. Okay, second. Okay. Okay, who was the second? I don't know. Okay. Um, all right, so uh, discussion. Okay, I'm gonna assume we have none. All right, so uh, could someone help me with the roster to go through? So Apologize. you can do a voice just... vote, all in favor, and if there's, uh, and then all opposed, if there's no opposed, then it's unanimous. All right, um, okay, uh, so all those uh, in favor of the uh, uh, final motion, uh, say aye. 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 Uh, those opposed? Okay, having hear, heard, heard no opposed, uh, the, the budget passes. All right. And so I guess we're now moving to the budget committee. Actually, no, we need uh, one more motion. Okay. Um, it, the two are in the back of the packet. <laughs> Sorry, I, I, I tried to download a packet. I didn't see one. So you'll have to help me with that. Someone if they could. I would move that we recommend that the Springfield Urban Renewal Agency Board of Directors request that the county assessor provide the maximum amount of revenue for the urban renewal plan areas that may be raised by dividing the taxes under Section 1C, Article 9 of the Oregon Constitution and ORS Chapter 457. Second. Okay, it's been moved, moved and seconded discussion. Okay, uh, uh, again, a voice vote. Uh, all those in favor? Aye. 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 All of those opposed? 
The motion passes. All right. Um, was that the last uh, motion then required? It is. Okay, thank you. Um, so I guess if, if any, any uh, other, other business, or do we close the meeting? Take a break. Okay. Um, all right. So uh, it is uh, 6.31. Uh, um, I don't know, five, 10 minutes. Could someone help me with that? 10 perhaps? Or? We plan five minutes unless- Five uh, minutes, like okay. A little longer. Uh, let's try for 6.37. Uh, reconvene at 6.37. All right, thank you.